Welcome to the map Dunhero in PFME 1 on the patch 2.22. It's been a very long time since we saw this map the last time. It's gonna be a good matchup too between Isengard and Gondor. I like this classical matchup. Soldiers leading forward through the right side of the map. The Hobbit will be capturing this one at the bottom right. And then eventually gonna move to this area. But the Uruks were already here to grab this slaughterhouse offensively. And I like that one. Offense is the best defense. Double Fern is opening into the Uruk pit. And he never captured this one behind. It's a mistake in my opinion. It's a free settlement which you can protect pretty much for the entire game. By building one tower here and then one tower here. It will be difficult for your opponent to ever reach this area. Um, he was capturing this offensively. But the goblins slowly but surely will take this one down. And he's marching forward to this spot. In the meantime the Uruk's coming. And they will be able to destroy this farm over here quite easily. And the soldiers, I don't know what they're doing. They are running it down a, a little bit. They're going to be getting bitten. Oh my god, Charlie bit me. Charlie bit my fingers. <laughs> okay, the Uruk's not using Warchant. He will get bullied a bit by the Hobbit. But the eco from Aizen should be getting, uh, getting pretty good. So he can now send one of the workers to the spot at the corner to get this settlement as well. So he should be in a very good spot. Getting more and more Uruks, but the soldiers are coming. And Isengard has the vision, so he's able to see them. Gondor didn't pick any power point just yet. He has Blacksmith farm farm outside. Inside. The Hobbit can and will be eventually getting cloaked here. Microing a bit. Hit, run, hit, run. And this lumber mill will be destroyed. In the meantime, he's using Warchant offensively to creep this goblin here. And one of the Uruks going back now to deal with this. But again, this tower really should have been built up way, way longer. Here, a tower would kind of, you know, demolish the soldiers while they are trying to reach to this area. But now, even now, the tower, as you can see and tell, has a good range. It, it can just demolish the soldiers quite easily. In the meantime, Hobbit was able to deal with this Uruk. He's now level 3, though. It's pretty good. Stable up on the field. The first Knight of Gondor is going to be joining the battlefield very, very soon. And this soldier is fighting. Good positioning though. I like it. Hugging the wall behind. It means the number advantage is not very important. It's like in the film 300. You know. A small battalion can hold a big battalion for a long duration. The positioning is very important. Now this slaughterhouse will be destroyed. He was also able to capture this lumber mill. The eco could look better. But he's Uruk pit level 2 now. And he will be able to reclaim this lumber mill. No problemo. Now this Uruk marching to the spot at the top right corner. This one has been destroyed. And Hobbit should be able to grab this one without any problems. The Knight of Gondor number 2 has been recruited. And the first Knight is going straight up forward. No tower. Ooh, he could have gone for this uh, for his furnace. But he was too scared. This Lumber Mill has no defense on it. Will be taken down. Warchant is available. Could be using Warchant here. He will be using Warchant here. And he should be easily able to creep this now without any problem and trouble. This Lumber Mill going down. And Gondor is creeping the Ward layer at the bottom left side of the map. There are trolls actually. Um, this is not a very balanced map, but it's a fun map. Troll at the bottom right corner. Usually you put a troll in a place where it matters. Here it doesn't really matter at all, you know. So basically what you can do later on is you can recruit Boromir, send him to this spot at the bottom right, creep the troll, get money, and get your Boromir to level 4. Basically for free, uncontested. Pikeman, Hobbit, creep has been taken. Knight number 3 has been recruited. There is a creep, there is a creep, we have plenty of creeps on this map. Aizen is creeping the top side, that's pretty good. With the Uruks. And he has a full base by now. That's also pretty decent. I like that one. So he needs to recruit more and more pikemen eventually. Gondor going for a full base. Might go for the shields and the forge bleeds to rush the base of Aizen. And also Gondor has four farms outside. That's pretty decent. With the two farms inside, he has now the food, uh, food bonus of 25%. It will make his knights quite cheap. And he has also one, two, three, four, five blacksmiths in total what you could do is demolish one of the farms and build a blacksmith to get the full discount of 40 percent you jump from 30 to 40 it's 10 percent more discount it's pretty effective 
The pikemen are coming, but I think they won't be there in time. The knights should be getting the creep and getting out. Oh, the Vorgen has been used, and Gondor will actually get both parts of the money quite risky. But he will do it. Aizen will capture the first outpost here with Triple Furnace on it. So he's going to get a lot of money now. And you can pretty much spam pikemen. Now, we've reached the point of the game in which playing this matchup from Aizen's per perspective is a bit easier. Because we basically can just spam pikemen, which are cheaper compared to the Knights of Gondor, but they are hard countering them, right? And Gondor has to do a lot to kind of counter this. He has three power points, but he, he never used any power point to begin with from the start of the game. He didn't go for the heal, not for the land, nothing. So he needs to make a choice. I think it's better to, at this point of the game to just go for land and then heal at the same time. But let's see what he's going to choose. Pikemen have to be rotating. Offensive Pikemen, I like it. Aizen taking over the map. That's pretty good. Gondor, not going for upgrades. It looks like you want to go for Gandalf Rush. He has 2000 in the bank. And there's also the power points what it takes to get Gandalf the Grey into the Gandalf the White. But he still needs around about 4000 for this. He went for shields and uh, blades. Never mind. He has actually good eco. Towering up. We've improved the smithy. We've improved the smithy. We the the shields will make them quite tanky against those arrows. The tower will need a lot of time to destroy one of these knights of Gondor. The pikeman is to be rotating very, very soon. And also the positioning here, you need to be around the well. So he's going for the Gan of the White, like mentioned before. He has 3,300, so he will get there very, very soon. Upgrades coming for Aizen, starting with the Forge Blades into the Heavy Armor. I always like to start with Banner, because it's the cheapest and also one of the most efficient on your pikemen. Because all you need to do is survive with one of them from the battalion and they will respawn over time with the Banner. Knight number 4, he's spamming knights now all over the place. I like it. They have still the Troll Creeps remaining. There are three actually of them. One, two, and three. One power point collected. Beautiful trample into the Uruks with level 3. And this double furnace, double furnace. I mean, Aizen's eco will be phenomenal. But trust me, the game will be changed this, from the moment on when Gandalf joins the battlefield. This pikeman can't really play that aggressive anymore. Because Gandalf is going to run through the map and blast you over and over again. Either you play super um, careful. That means you need to pay attention to every pikeman of yours and try to dodge the Gandalf when you see him or you basically back off a little bit back up a little bit to your own side of the map and try to build an army that is capable of taking down Gandalf and for that you need Lourdes the same situation also with Lourdes here you can easily creep this with Lourdes ooh what a punch punch ooh nice punching I like it this farm is going to be destroyed too lots of pressure but Gandalf is going to be recruited from Gondor Gandalf the White will join the battlefield very, very soon. No heavy armor yet, but it's about to be changed. He has enough money now for the heavy armor. It will make the Knights of Gondor quite more durable. And with a couple of levels on them, they can even one one pikemen when they have no forge bleeds or heavy armor. A wizard arrives precisely when he means but for now, a wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Look to the east, boys. It's the first light on the fifth day. A boom, Chakalaka. The difference maker, the game changer, Mifrandia, aka the White Rider. He's marching to the creep. Uh, this creep should always be taken by Boromir, by the way. There is no need for Ganaf to take this creep at all. Just do it with Boromir. Make Boromir and send him to this location. But it looks like he doesn't want to do it. He wants to get some levels on his Ganaf. So he should be easily able to creep this with the Knights of Condor, level 5. And also when the knights are fighting next to the Gandalf, they will level up way faster too. Because of the combat experience, Gandalf's leadership is giving 50% more combat experience to the nearby allied units around him. But the creep was taken by Gondor, I like it. I mean, he can now bring the troll obviously to the... The troll is punching, he's a mean one. Aizen rotating to the outpost with triple, three combos, Lurtz. But Lord's only level 1. That's not good. You need level 5. You need every damage leadership you can actually take. You know, to get 
enough DPS to take down Gandalf fast enough. So basically what it means is, when you cripple Gandalf, he's gonna be crippled for 25 seconds. He can't move for that amount of duration. And with, without Lord's leadership, it will be difficult to break through the Gandalf defenses. It is involving the healing from the Spellbook of Gondor, and also the bubble he can use, you know? The bubble here, which will give, give him a huge uh, armor reduction, I mean damage reduction for 3 seconds. Outpost will be captured. Again, one more blast was used to kill the pikemen. Gandalf is farming power points for Gondor. He has four power points in, to in total almost after the Gandalf the White. He never went for the heal though, uh, for the land though. I think land is desperately needed against Isengard. You can basically spam the land all over the place. A siege works into the ballista. I'm not sure if this is a good idea to send your Uruk crossbowman combo forward like this. That, as, that's a very vulnerable combo against Night Trample because he has no pikemen involved into it, you know? Gondor has four knights. The push can be quite dangerous. So you need a lot of pikemen to be prepared for this. The first big rush is about to happen, boys. The four knights of Gondor with full upgrades and the armor leadership they will receive from Gandalf will make them almost invincible. Ooh, boom, chakalaka. <laughs> Level 7 Gandalf to white, boys. Okay. I mean, he's gonna deal for now, but he was forcing his opponent to use the war chant defensively and still got a beautiful blast off and wiped out everything. Now, the siege will begin, but he has already the trebuchet ready for the defense. The Ballista is dealing hella damage to the wall. Like, all it takes is like five shots, I believe. One, yeah, five, five shots to destroy this. Maybe six. Let's count. Three and yeah, six, I believe. It's around 50% gone now. Maybe five. Four? Nah, it's six, definitely. But he's going now for the Ballista number two. Each broken part of the wall will um, cost Gondor 2200 to repair. It's a lot of cash. So if you break like three parts of the wall, that's more than Gandalf. You know, that, that will cost more than Gandalf to repair all of that. So you need, what you need here is Vork Riders. So you can go inside the jeans with the Vorks and destroy this trebuchet. Two parts of the world broken. And the knights are rotating once again to the castle of Isin, Which has a pikeman and a pikeman crossbowman combo in it. So it's somehow kind of stable. The, sh the fire stone purchased. But the siege wars will be destroyed now. Here comes the cavalry. One more beautiful juice uh, from Ganov to get even more power points. He's getting very close to the cloud break. He needs only one more power, one more power point for that. The workshop will be destroyed after one more shot. There we go. The knights are committing, but they need to be careful. There are too many pikemen around with forge bleeds. They will just one tap all your knights if they ever get into the trample situation. And it looks like the mission from Aizen is to turn the you know, Gondor base into a potential Mordor base. The trebuchet are hitting very hard though with the splash damage. He was able to you know, destroy almost both of them. We need two shots with the trebuchet to destroy the Ballista. But also the same way, other, uh, the same thing other way around. So you need two Ballista shots to destroy one trebuchet. It's going for the Saruman. Again, here what you need in this situation are Vork Riders. So imagine if like two of them you sent them in. You destroy this four trebuchet and you can basically walk into the base with your army and take down your army. Gondor is just cocky because he's like, okay, I have four trebuchet in my base. Ooh, fireball! Okay, the blast was not really on point. And the knights are getting bullied. Heal was used. And they will barely get away. The level five so close. But it looks like he will be good to go. Boromi has been recruited as the... You know, defender of the White City, he's in the base. Again, what lacks here are works, something that can go in without with being mobile. Also, you know. Oh, but it's an explosive mine action, boys. Okay, he's paying attention to it. He's paying attention to it. He's sending Boromir to deal with this. Where is the cripple at when we need them? Cripple, Boro? But if you, oh my god, he's coming out with Gandalf because there's no more cripple. You can go for him. War chant? It's gonna go. Ooh, kaboom! <laughs> Son! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
Oh my god! Gandalf the White! <laughs> Level almost 9 Gandalf the White, boys. For the Gondor player, he will just peel now. He has no more heal. And also, Boromi was able to survive too. It's like the best possible outcome from this situation. Beautiful trampling coming. And lots of power points were fed to the Gondor player. Here's the outpost also under his control. The entire top side, really. Top right. Eisen is the top left side. And the bottom left side. Trebish are moving forward. The damage is kind of nutty. Destroying this in a few seconds. The Siege Works level 2 will be taken down. And the steel will be there. But again, exposed. And eventual. Oh, he's gonna put him into the tower. Put him into the tower. Nah, he's out. <laughs> he's out. The pikemen are not dealing too much damage to the trebuchet, by the way. Oof, but the trebuchet are dealing too much damage to the pikemen. Boromi is getting a little bit bullied, just like in the films. Barami is also here protecting the trebuchet. And one more blast will be available one more time in a few seconds. And he's waiting for it, holding for it. Bad trample, but he has armor, they have armor leadership from Gandalf. That means they won't get one-shotted. Oh, the Easter Delight. And Gandalf is turning level 9. And something in my heart tells me that we will get the chance to see the War of Power in this game, ladies and gentlemen. And you know it, I know it, he, she, it knows it. That we love to see the level 10 abilities from the heroes. There are only two heroes that have a level 10 ability in this game. And one of them is being Gandalf. The other one is Aragorn. And both level 10 abilities really can change the outcome of the game. The War of Power, look at the description. Kill surrounding enemies. In the meantime, four characters have been finally recruited. But I think it's a little bit too late for this. Because he already lost the momentum here. But he was still able to bring three parts of the wall. However, Gondor has good eco. He has good income with this outpost over here, with level 3 farms all over the place. And that's another reason why works are very important, because works can deny this from happening. The, with this, I mean, Gondor becoming so wealthy and so incredibly rich. You, could, you would basically never give him the chance to get this level 3 farms under his control for a long time, like he did. Which is the main reason why he has so much money, you know. His outpost will be taken down. Saruman will be revived in the main castle, though. That's pretty good. The Vork, you see what I'm talking about? It, you know, that's totally fine. If you destroy with one Vork Rider, two Trebuchet, and you lose the Vork Rider in exchange, I think that's a great exchange you need to take. The problem is also that Lourdes is far from being level 5. Far from being level 5. So he's only level 1, actually. He never got any experience points during all this time. That's why you need Lourdes way, way before. You, you could creep this with Lourdes, get level 3, which will make you much more threatening with the Carnage, Cripple combination, and also get you a big step closer to the level 5 power spike, which will make you more tanky. It means Easter Egg can't one-shot you anymore. Easter Egg can only one-shot you if you, have, if you are level 1, you know? If you are level 2, you will be able to survive the Easter Egg. This guy's name is 888 slash 8 slash 20. I like it. <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to mean, but I like it. Does it mean 8 kills, 8 deaths, and 20 assistants? I don't know. Okay. No combos, no soldiers. Only trebuchet and knights. The old school Gondor gameplay. Not really meta right now in the 2.22. In which you have much more possibilities. You can go for the soldier, you can go for the combos, you can go for the soldier tower guard combination. You don't really, you don't really need trebuchet that much anymore. You need only the trebuchet when he has when he has the rain, you know. Which he never went for. He went for the kill the fires. You see the works destroyed everything. Boromir, just like in the films. Gone. There comes Cloudbreak. Where is Gandalf when we need it? Barami is dead too. Gandalf can't really approach this army at all because Lourdes is holding on his cripple. As long as cripple is available, you can't really do too much. But he has almost the EOD already, man. Dude, this is like the sprinting EOD rush, by the way. You see the power point choice from Gondor? Heal. Two power points for the Gandalf. Seven power points for the Cloud Break. And then ten for the EOD. This is the fastest way you can use. Uh, you can play with Gondor to reach EOD. No land, no rangers, no Rohirrim, no eagles. Straight up rush. 
Bam, bam, bam. If you will have four power points, and your power points number four will be EOD. That's the fastest way. You see the, the knights, uh, the works are going in now. And again, they will fire power points here. You see? The damage is kind of nutty. Two shots you need. But in the meantime, he's going for the bees. It's now the power points for him, what he needs for the EOD. Oof, the knights are hitting so so incredible hard. Level 9 knights, level 6 knights. They will be able to take down the castle in literally no time. In the meantime, this is going to be a bee swap potential. The Sharku is not very tanky. He will get killed by the towers without destroying any of these. And there comes the EUD. Look at the power point differential. I mean, obviously, he went for this. It's a one power point. And for this, it's three power points. So he needs three power points. It would still be around 15. Still five away from the Balrog. EOD has been used defensively. Killing both Lourdes and Saruman too. Aizen is kind of poor. Without any map control. Without too much map control at least. He has still this two level three lumber mills. But the problem is they have barely any trees remaining around anymore. For the, for the thing. Maybe you won't get to see him level 10 though. He still needs... The thing is, the more level a hero gets... Yes? What what happened? He sent him inside the citadel. Okay. The more level a hero has, the slower he will advance, you know? Like, the requirement from level 5 to level 6 is way lower than the requirement from level 6 to level 7. So each, each level will require much more experience. And the biggest one is from level 9 to level 10, obviously. That comes the lightning sword. I'm a servant of the secret fire. Lord! can't get out <laughs> almost though almost the knights are demolishing the works oh oh, oh holy <laughs> okay that's the fastest way of reaching EOD man this four power points the fastest possible way look at the mini map Convert is everywhere Boromir has been revived Trebuchet left and right. And I like this map, dude. I mean, it's not the most balanced map, but it's a fun map. I mean, to be honest, none of the EA Meet maps are actually balanced. You know, they're all unbalanced. They have no symmetry, symmetrical maps at all in the map. Ooh, hold on a second. He got it, boys. He got it. The War of Power. Easter, he will be used. Gondor is going for the W. 8, 8, 20 will become 8, 9, 20 after this game. You got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> he went for the Eagles too. You shall not pass. Here's the Sharku here. But the main castle is falling apart. The Knights, level 10. Super beefy, super tanky, and also hitting like an absolute truck. Sharku is super tanky against knights, as you can see and tell, right? Look at the range, though. And the brothers. He will see the glory days of Gondor once again. 8 8 20 has been defeated, and that's all about it. You know. At least you have seen how to reach the EUD power spike the fastest possible way. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep eating like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.